And this gives you an idea of the beauty. I mean, Richard, didn't, isn't that... That was made by the wind. And look at the colour. I mean, it was just stunning. And we saw beautiful icebergs. We couldn't take too many pictures because uh, within two minutes of taking your camera out, the battery froze, and you'd have to keep changing your batteries. And the same when you were trying to find your way on the, on the um, ice. You'd take out your GPS in the morning and find out where you had to go, and then the battery went. So we had loads and loads and loads of spare batteries. And I had organised ourselves some fishermen's vests, so we kept all our batteries and anything liquid that we needed in this. The others had sewed pockets in their t-shirts, but this vest was really terrific. Anyone who's a fisherman will know what I mean. Endless pockets, all close to your body. But I just thought that was so beautiful. And this gives you some idea of the Suscrigi. It was just so difficult all the time. And that beautiful turquoise, sometimes we found was open. We had little bits of water. And we realised, this was the first time, because this is ten years ago, we began to realise there was definitely, definitely global warming. And that is what I call the meringue ice. Now, as I say, when we were getting to the first checkpoint, all three of us were really quite miserable. I mean, it was only, God, I think it was about six days, and already we began to think, what have we let ourselves in for? And the boys agreed, all three of us thought, did we really want to go on? And the boys actually confessed to me that they were hoping I would give up so they could give up with honour. Well, there was no way I was going to give up, was there? There was no way. And when we got to the first checkpoint, and we were about a day behind everyone else, little, 63, 30 years older than most of them. When we got there, we actually found that everybody felt this way. 